Now let's turn our attention uh, to the conflict in Ukraine. It's been one of the deadliest days in Ukraine since the war began. At least 51 people have been killed and more than 270 injured after Russia hit a military training facility with two ballistic missiles. The attack happened in the central eastern city of Poltava, a building used by the city's Military Institute of Communications was partially destroyed and a nearby hospital was also hit. Being a military installation, Ukrainian restrictions only allow us to show you these images that you're seeing on the screen of the destruction in Poltava. The attack came four weeks after Ukraine's incursion into the Kursk region of Russia. Today, President Zelensky vowed to indefinitely hold the Russian territory his troops have seized. Well, President Zelensky was speaking to NBC News's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, who joins me now live from Kiev. Uh, Richard, really good to see you. And of course, you've spoken to President Zelensky today. Just give us a sense of what he said, because he made some remarks there about Kursk. Uh, he did, Yalda. That's what I think was so interesting, that the timing of this interview was important. I, I've sat down with President Zelensky in interviews like this for more than a half dozen times since the start of the war. And this was perhaps one of the, one of the more interesting or surprising because he said almost nothing about the operation, which was a, a, a flipping the whole script of the war on, on Russia, on Vladimir Putin. And he said actually nothing about the plans that he has for this territory. So he, he took this territory in a surprise move and he said that he did not inform uh, the Pentagon, did not inform other foreign governments, didn't inform members of his own government until the very last second. He said that it was a preemptive strike that uh, Ukrainian intelligence learned uh, that, uh, and also other intelligence agencies told them that uh, Russia was planning to invade Ukraine and capture a buffer zone. So they decided to strike first, grab a piece of, uh, of Russia, and today he said they're going to hold it indefinitely. And, and that was the, the, the part, I think, that, that sort of advances the story, brings it forward uh, from today. And that was where I started the interview uh, th this morning when I sat down uh, with him and I said, President Zelensky, what's next? Now you've captured this territory in Russia. So the big question is, what do you plan to do with it? We don't need the Russian territory. Our operation is aimed to restore our territorial integrity. We capture Russian troops to replace them with the Ukrainian. We tell them, you know, we need our military soldiers uh, in exchange with the Russian ones. The same attitude is to uh, the territories. We don't need their land. Is the plan to take more territory? Or I will not to... tell her. Sorry, I can't. I can't speak about it. It's it's, it's like the beginning of our this Kursk operation. Uh, with all respect, I can't uh, speak about it. I think that the success is very close to surprise. But conceptually, you have this territory now. You say you don't want to keep it long. Conceptually, term. we will hold it. Conceptually, we will hold it. President Zelensky there speaking to you, Richard, uh, a little earlier there. But I guess the, the next question is, with the focus on keeping, for the Ukrainians, keeping this Russian territory, perhaps indefinitely or for as long as they can keep it, how much pressure does that put on them when it comes to, you know, retaining other areas within Ukraine that, that the Russians are, you know, continuing to target and attack them over? And that is the fundamental question that Ukrainians are asking, uh, Ukrainian military officers I've been speaking to are asking themselves, this country has limited resources. It is dependent on foreign uh, military supplies in order to keep fighting this war. Can Ukraine, with the resources, with the, the manpower that it has, hold roughly 1,200 square kilometers of territory inside Russia? which is different for Ukraine. It is operating, uh, till now, it's been operating on its own soil where it has uh, the, the support of, of friendly locals. Now, 
it's operating in enemy territory where the, 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 the locals' behavior certainly cannot be trusted. It's a different type of conflict. Can Ukraine hold a piece of foreign territory for long and continue to defend the East? And just in the last several days, there have been uh, significant Russian advances in the East. And then earlier today, we saw this uh, ballistic missile strike in Poltava, which isn't very far from Kursk. And perhaps uh, it was Vladimir Putin sending a message because this area the, that, that Ukraine has occupied is really just over the border from Poltava, where there was this devastating attack. So can uh, Ukraine do both? President Zelensky hopes they can, and he hopes that by taking this piece of Russia, it will not only boost morale here, but it'll encourage uh, Ukraine's backers, particularly in the United States, that Ukraine needs more support, deserves more support, and he now plans to go to Washington at the end of this month on the sidelines of the UN uh, General Assembly meeting and present his plan, he describes it as a plan for victory to President Biden and Vice President Harris and candidate Donald Trump on the heels of this operation. So he's going to the U.S. On the, uh, with a full set of steam, so to speak, saying, look what we just did in Russia, we need more support. But yes, it comes with a cost. Can they hold all this territory and for how long? Yeah, indeed. What happens over the next few months is certainly very, very significant for the Ukrainians. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. And our viewers can uh, watch your interview on the NBC website. Thanks again.